colligative properties are those characteristics that a solvent would have that get changed when uh, a solute is introduced into that solvent. So, so what can actually change? Well, if you think about a glass of water uh, and you pass light through, say, a glass of water from one end to the, well, the light will come out the other end. Okay. And uh, if you put in like, a, like dirt or something like that, what you might get then in solution are aggregates and clumps of large molecules that will deflect light uh, out to the sides. And that's actually called the Tyndall effect. Well, that's a, that's a different uh, characteristic that the water would have now that it's a solution. All right, well, what's another one? Uh, that one's not as elegant maybe as this one here, which is what would happen to the boiling point and the freezing point of a solvent when you introduce a solute into it? Well, the explanation and then the calculation uh, is coming up. So, explanation. If you take a solvent and you put a lid on top of it, is there any evaporation of the solvent molecules? Do you like that diagram? I know. It, this is a beaker with a lid on it. Okay, fine. And, and this is just a bunch of, and these are just a bunch of solvent molecules that are there. Well, you know that water, if you just left the lid off of water and you just let it sit outside, it's going to evaporate. Well, it'll still evaporate with the lid on it, but it's going to form an equilibrium between evaporated molecules and ones that are in solution where you're going to get evaporation equaling condensation over time at a given temperature. And that right there is going to be a little gas collection of water molecules above the liquid surface. And we're going to call that the vapor pressure of the solution. Now, the vapor pressure of the solution is very important. Water has a certain vapor pressure at 25 degrees Celsius, and it has a certain vapor pressure at 0 degrees Celsius and 100 degrees Celsius at its freezing and boiling points. Hey, play let's pretend. Love play let's pretend. If you have a vapor pressure of 5 at water's boiling point, it's not that, but let's just pretend, just, let's just invent the unit, 5. Okay. 5 is the vapor pressure of water at its boiling point. What happens when you add a solute into that solvent? Well, that means then that some of these particles now that are floating around in solution are these solute particles that are differentiated here from the solvent molecules. They physically block the evaporation, these solute particles, of the solvent to be able to form that vapor. So what happens to the vapor pressure of the solution is that it becomes less than what the pure solvent's vapor pressure was. The vapor pressure is very important because water, let's say that 5 there was important to be a vapor pressure for water at its boiling point. And vapor pressure, not necessarily temperature, is the key to the boiling point. You know that water boils at 100 degrees Celsius at sea level, but actually it boils less when you get to higher elevations in terms of temperature, right? Like 92 or 93. Where I live, water boils at around 95, 96 degrees Celsius. But what's important to achieve is the vapor pressure. Now, if you actually have four molecules of gas instead of five above here, but you need five to get to the boiling point, you need to add more energy to that solution to be able to get it to boil. And so what happens to the boiling point? Boiling points elevate when you put solutes into them, and freezing points actually depress. That's why when you put uh, salt into boiling water, the temperature does go up, uh, the boiling point goes up, and when you take uh, water that's frozen on the ground and you sprinkle salt on top of it, it melts because what happens is you've changed the freezing point of that. It's gone lower. Freezing point depression is what it's called. And all of a sudden, you've got a, a sidewalk that you can walk on because it's not slippery anymore, right? So the deal is, what's the calculation to determine the new temperature, uh, the new freezing point or the new boiling point? This is the formula. Delta T equals IMK, where I is the number of particles that the solute dissociates into if it's ionic. So for sodium chloride, it would be roughly around 2, although there is a little bit of a correction, a Van Hoff correction that has to occur. It's really about 1.9 for NaCl, but that's okay. That would be on a table and you can look it up. So the I value is generally just the number of dissociated particles that the solute forms, and if it's molecular, the I value is always 1 because they don't dissociate in solution. M is the molality. That's where molality comes in. 
and the K is called the molal freezing point depression constant or molal boiling point elevation constant. It's either KF for freezing or KB for boiling. Let's do one quick question to show you how that formula works. So you've got 10 grams of glucose, C6H12O6, and you're going to put it into 120 milliliters of water. What's the new freezing point of that? Well, there is a new freezing point because water as a solvent has a freezing point of zero degrees Celsius when the atmosphere is at well, it's at one atmosphere of pressure, or 101.325 kPa, or 760 torr, which is millimeters of mercury. That's all coming up in gases. Now, the new freezing point, well, boiling points get elevated, freezing points get depressed. So it's going to be less than zero. What's the calculation that you're going to have to do? Well, delta T equals I, M, and the K value is the freezing point depression constant. So the change in temperature is, why is the I value 1? Because glucose is a molecular compound. So it's 1 times, what's the molality? Molality is moles of solute. There's the calculation for moles of solute, taking the mass and dividing by the molar mass of glucose, that's the moles. Moles of solute divided by kilograms of the solvent. I have 120 milliliters of water, and hey, at 25 degrees Celsius or so, right, the density of water is one gram per milliliter. So therefore, if you got 120 milliliters, we got 120 grams, divide by 1,000, and you got 0 0.120 kilograms. Okay, and then the freezing point depression constant, you actually have to have that given to you, or you have to look it up, and for water, it's 1.86 degrees Celsius kilograms per mole. When you do all of this math here, you get 0 0.860 degrees Celsius, and that's not the answer. That is the change in the freezing point. That's the delta T. So what do you have to do? You have to use your logic and say, all right then, freezing points get depressed. And so this is going to be the change in temperature from zero. So zero minus zero decimal eight six zero, that's degrees Celsius and degrees Celsius is going to give you negative zero decimal eight six zero degrees Celsius. And that's the answer.